Have you ever wanted to crush Kanto's gyms with a fully obedient level 100 Pokemon? What about going on your journey with Mew on your team? Have you ever wanted to fight a secret unused boss trainer left in the game data? I'd like to talk to you all about Trainerfly. I just want to apologize in advance for the video quality you're about to see. It's a little fuzzy because I'm literally pointing a webcam, this webcam, at my Nintendo 3DS with my virtual console copies of Pokemon Yellow on them. This was basically the most available way for me to actually take footage for this video so again i apologize in advance i have a retron but i don't have physical carts for pokemon red blue and yellow so you can do them though on any official releases of the games i just wanted to show in some manner that you can in fact do this on whatever copy of Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow you happen to have right now. So what is the Trainer Fly glitch? In Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, and Pokemon Yellow, there's a glitch involving certain NPC trainers that we call Long Range Trainers. These Long Range Trainers can spot the player from as far away as possible while they're on screen. So as soon as they're on screen, they'll spot the player and engage in a battle. But there's a small catch. You see, while these trainers are off screen, they're technically registered as facing a different direction than the direction they'll typically face when they're on screen. There is a brief period of time that they need to be turned around by the game, a split second. And in that split second, if the player moves so that the NPC trainer is on screen, but buffers the pause menu at just the right time, they can actually go into their menu and do whatever they want. But in the case of this glitch, They'll use field moves like fly, or teleport, or they'll use the item the escape rope, or the move dig if they're in an interior, and they'll actually escape the battle. Now, the trainer will still show the exclamation point, and the jingle will still play, but before the trainer can actually approach the player, the player will have escaped. However, when this glitch is performed, the player from here will not have control over their A, B, Starter Select buttons, except for soft resetting the game. The in-game functions of these buttons will not work anymore. Now, fixing this glitch is actually pretty easy, but rather than explain that first, how about we just jump right into the first exploit of this video? We're gonna explain and show off how to catch Mew. First, we have to set a few things up. You'll want to play the game normally up through Cerulean City and Nugget Bridge. Doesn't matter whether you're playing Pokemon Red, Blue, or Yellow, just play the game normally, play it however you wish. When you get to Cerulean City, there'll be a few things that we'll need to start setting up from here. Firstly, there's two trainers we're going to want to make sure we do not battle yet. The first one of those is the youngster across from Nugget Bridge, and the second is going to be the swimmer in Cerulean Gym which means we also can't have battled Misty yet, because if we battle Misty, then this trainer's not going to want to battle us either. If you're playing Pokemon Yellow, you'll also need to make sure that you clear all the way through to Bill's house and have met him in order to move the guard that's in front of the ransacked house. If you're playing Pokemon Red and Blue, you just need to have cleared Nugget Bridge. So this glitch might be called Trainer Fly, but we don't actually have access to Fly yet. So in its place, we're going to need the Pokemon Abra, and Abra knows the move Teleport. Just make sure that you've used Cerulean City's Pokemon Center at some point. Make sure it was the last Pokemon Center you used. This way here, we'll be able to actually set this glitch up. Now, the reason why we need to clear out Route 25 if we're playing Pokemon Yellow is because Abra has been moved to Route 5 where the Pokemon Daycare is if you're playing Pokemon Red and Blue. You just have to catch Abra in the patch of grass on Route 25. Make sure you've stocked your bag with as many Pokeballs as you think you might need and can also afford because, of course, we're going to be trying to catch Mew. Mew can be a little tricky to catch. So once we have everything prepared, all we have to do is position ourselves so we are one tile away from placing the youngster across from Nugget Bridge on screen. I would recommend saving the game here because once we start doing this glitch, things are gonna get a little wacky and this would be the best point to have as a point of reference to reset from if we need to do anything in case, you know, we mess up or something, I don't know. So once you're ready to start performing this glitch, take a step forward towards the youngster and immediately buffer a pause by holding the pause button as you start moving down. If you did it correctly, your character should move down and the pause menu should open up as soon as you're done stepping towards the youngster. The youngster will be on screen, but the game will be paused. 
with our setup ready, we're going to go into our Pokemon menu, select Abra, and use Teleport. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to use Teleport. The trainer's still going to notice us. They're going to have the exclamation, the jingle, but we're going to warp back to Cerulean City. From here, we're going to want to go to the Cerulean City Gym and fight that swimmer that's inside the gym. They have a Shelter as their second Pokemon. That Shelter is very important. We'll explain why later. Once we've finished fighting that swimmer, we can return back to Nugget Bridge. And as we approach Route 24 Nugget Bridge, the pause menu should pop up. And all you have to do is exit the pause menu and we'll get an encounter. If we did it right, then Mew will be our encounter at level 7. And from here, it is a standard wild Pokemon battle. You can weaken the Mew however you feel, chuck as many Pokeballs as you want. But congratulations, we've been able to acquire Mew through this glitch. But why did that work exactly? So let's break that down now. When you trigger the trainer fly glitch, the game's trying to piece together what's supposed to be happening. Normally, because the last thing that happened on Route 24 in this case is that a trainer spotted us, a game would be preparing to load that trainer's data, so then we'd be able to fight that trainer once their dialogue ends. But because we interrupted that process, the game needs to pull from somewhere, right? This is why we had to fight that shelter earlier in the gym. The special stat of the Pokemon has a key factor in this glitch. Yeah, the special stat. You know, the, the stat that was one stat that operated its two stats in the first games and was really broken. Not only was it powerful just because it was a strong stat that, you know, operated as two, it also is the key to this glitch. The reason the special stat is so important is that there is an internal ID list of all of the Pokemon in the game, and the special stat just so happens to reference that ID list during this glitch to tell us what are we going to encounter when we return to the area with the trainer that we escaped from. If you watched my first video where I did a small little brief captioned sped up video on how to get a level 100 Gengar before fighting Brock, then you might know that I battled the Diglett in the Pewter City Gym, and that Diglett that the junior trainer had had a special stat of 14, which was the same ID as Gengar. Mew's internal ID is 21, so we have to battle a Pokemon with a special stat of 21 as our last battled Pokemon in order to make the encounter on the route that we're returning to give us Mew, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of different outcomes that we can get here, but the special stat is super important to this glitch because it dictates exactly what we're gonna see. Now, I'm just gonna go over how to get a level 100 Pokemon before Brock so you can crush Kanto with a fully obedient level 100 Pokemon. So I mentioned earlier that I have a video on how to do this, but I actually want to really break down exactly how this works. So there's a trainer in Viridian Forest exclusive to Pokemon Yellow that is a long range trainer. And if you use this trainer, you can escape the battle, you can go do you know whatever else you want, and you can perform the glitch for Viridian Forest. Specifically, we actually need to leave that trainer alone go to Pewter City, and Pewter City sells the escape rope. Thanks to the access to the escape rope, we won't need fly, dig, or teleport, we just need the item of the escape rope, but we need one more thing, and that is a Pokemon that knows the move Growl. Growl is very important to this specific aspect of the glitch and the next exploit. First, let's go ahead, line ourselves up in front of that trainer in Viridian Forest, perform the glitch, use the escape rope in order to go back to Pewter City. Then we're going to go fight the junior trainer in Brock's gym. Now very important, and something I didn't mention in the first exploit of this glitch, is that we need to make sure that when we are in the middle of this glitch, once we've escaped that long range trainer, the next trainer that we fight has to approach us from at least a tile away. We can't just be right next to them, otherwise the game will soft lock. So the easiest way to do that is just walk around the right side, and then walk towards the Light Years Junior Trainer in Brock's gym so that they actually walk towards us and initiate a battle. Diglett is their first Pokemon, and it has a special of 14, giving us Gengar. As I showed off in that video, we need to make sure that we use Growl six times on this dig because the attack stage modifier, funnily enough, is also important to this glitch, just the same way that the special stat is. You might remember earlier in the video we had Mew 
and it was level 7. That's not a coincidence. You see, although attack stage modifiers are between negative 6 and positive 6, the game actually reads this as 1 through 13. The default is 7 or no changes. So basically, if we alter the attack stat of the same Pokemon whose special is being used for this glitch, we can also alter the level of the encountered Pokemon. So when we use this glitch in order to get up level 100 before Brock, it is crucial that we use Growl six times on this Diglett, lowering its attack stage modifier to minus six, which also means that the Pokemon we encounter will be level one. Because there's a second glitch that we're going to take advantage of for this one, and that is Experience Underflow. You see, in the first couple generations of Pokemon, there is a glitch with one of the experience growth rates, the medium slow growth rate, that causes the game to read the experience needed between level 1 and level 2 as negative 54. And because the game can't really read this negative number, it thinks that these Pokemon have over 16 million experience. Obviously, no Pokemon needs 16 million experience to get from level 1 to level 100. So, when the game sees that this Pokemon has 16 million experience, as long as it doesn't gain that 54 experience to reach level 2, it's going to see, oh well, it has 16 million experience, it should be level 200 and bajillion. So, instead of the Pokemon actually reaching level 2, it will just wrap back around to level 100. So with that said, we pretty much do the glitch the same exact way as what we did with Mew. You just have to escape that trainer in Viridian Forest, fight the youngster, lose on purpose to their Diglett after growling six times so it'll be level 1, return to Viridian Forest, and we'll be able to catch a level 1 Gengar. The Gengar will then just need to acquire less than 54 experience, and it's level 100. So we've used this glitch to obtain the mythical Pokemon Mew. We've got an overpowered level 100 Pokemon before fighting Brock, but I mentioned a secret unused boss trainer in the game's data. It's Professor Oak. Yep, we can fight Professor Oak with this glitch, but there's a little bit of a catch. You see, remember how earlier I mentioned that there's an internal ID list and there's got to be more entries than there are Pokemon because there's only 151? Well, let's, let's go over that. Now, before we actually do this glitch, I want to warn everyone watching this video, if you haven't actually done the trainer fly glitch before. I do not recommend doing this one first because it is much more complicated and if you do something wrong and if you use the wrong special stat you might encounter stuff that actually can be harmful to your save file. So if if you haven't done trainer fly yet probably wait till you've got a little more experience with it before you do this. Now before we do this glitch we need to have a bunch of things set up. First we need a pokemon of our own that has the special stat of 226. In that same internal ID listing, this is Professor Oak's ID number, it's 226. Now there's a bunch of other trainers in this ID listing, but of course Professor Oak's the one that we want. We also need to make sure that we still have a Pokemon with Growl. I decided to use a Persian because Persian's really fast and you'll probably want something that's faster because we need to use Ditto and Ditto's going to actually be used for Transform. Ditto's a real quirky Pokemon and apparently you can use it as an extension of this glitch. Because Ditto copies your Pokemon stats exactly except for HP, if Ditto was the last Pokemon encountered with this glitch then you'll be able to encounter basically anything you want. Now, the reason why we need Growl is a little interesting. If you remember, in the second section, I covered the fact that the level of the encountered Pokemon is tied into the attack stage modifier. When you use Growl, you can change the level of the Pokemon. You see, the trainers actually have an entire roster of Pokemon with predetermined levels, but they also have multiple rosters. And in the case of Professor Oak, he has three. So in order to actually battle him, we'll need to make sure that we use Growl between four and six times. Let's actually get into what we have to do for this glitch, because it's a lot. So, you'll need any long-range trainer. At this point, it actually does not matter which trainer that that is. You can use the Youngster on Nugget Bridge. You can use the trainer in Viridian Forest if you're playing yellow. You can use this youngster over here on Route 11. You can use this trainer over here on Route 8. Does not matter, as long as you can use a long range trainer, you'll be able to start setting this glitch up. You'll also want to make sure that there's any trainer in the game you haven't battled yet 
who can approach the trainer from at least one tile away, and they'll be used in order to unlock our controls so that we can actually properly prepare for this glitch. So I'm going to use this trainer on Route 11, so we're going to battle Oak when we return to Route 11 with this glitch. But just remember that whichever trainer that you use, that location you don't return to until after you've gotten everything else set up. With this youngster escaped from, we're going to have our controls locked. Then we want to make sure we fight any trainer in the game that can approach us from at least a tile away that's not on the same route. So I'm going to use this trainer over here. With our controls unlocked, we'll want to go to one of two locations. It depends on the version that you're playing. See, if you're playing Pokemon Red and Blue, this is actually really easy. Ditto is found on the route right to the east of Fuchsia. So you can just grab whatever Pokemon that you need, walk right over, you can just start getting into encounters till you get Ditto, no problem. If you're playing Pokemon Yellow though, it is a little trickier, so I'm going to break that down because that's what I used for this glitch. You'll want to get an escape rope. You need one of these in order to make this consistent. And you'll also probably just want to use a repel or two. Ditto's only locations in Pokemon Yellow are in Cerulean Cave and the Pokemon Mansion. And in this case, we're going to use the Pokemon Mansion. Ditto is only found on the very bottom floor. So once we're at the location where we find Ditto, depending on your game, just run around until you find Ditto. And once you have reached a Ditto, it's going to need to use Transform on the Pokemon that has the special of 226. I used a Moltres, just have it transform into that. And then you're going to want to switch to your Pokemon that knows Growl, and use Growl four to six times. Now, which team Professor Oak uses is going to depend on the number of times you Growl. Professor Oak only has three teams, so we need to make sure that we use Growl at least that many times because there's only rosters for slots one, two, and three, which would be the same as level one, level two, and level three for wild Pokemon. Now, once we've used Growl enough times, we can actually just run away, as I showed off in the previous section. You don't actually need to beat the Pokemon whose special stat's being used, they just have to be the last one that was encountered. Do not catch this Ditto, though, because if you catch Ditto, it's going to use Ditto's actual special stat, not the special stat of the Pokemon that it's copying. So either beat it or run away. If you're playing Pokemon Yellow, you'll want to use the escape route right here in order to leave the Pokemon Mansion without encountering any other Pokemon. And then all you have to do is return to the route that had the long range trainer that you used, whichever route that was, and your pause menu should start up. All you have to do from here is just back out of the menu and you'll have a battle with Professor Oak. Now, the reason why Growl needs to be used four to six times, as I mentioned earlier, he has three teams in rosters slot one, slot two, and slot three. Now, four of his Pokemon are actually the same, he uses Exeggutor, Arcanine, Gyarados, which are shared with the rival champion battle, if you're playing Pokemon Red Blue. He also has Tauros, which is interesting, the only NPC to really utilize it of all the major NPCs in the game. But the interesting thing is he has one of the fully evolved Kanto starters. And thanks to Zero Kid on Game FAQs, who has a guide on this, we actually know the attack stage modifiers that correspond to each of these. If you want to fight Blastoise, then you'll need to use 6 Growls, which is roster 1 he uses Blastoise. If you use 5 Growls, it gives us roster 2, and he uses the Pokemon Venusaur. If you use 4 Growls, then we'll get roster 3, where he uses Charizard. You know, something I found interesting about the order of Professor Oak's rosters based on the number of Growls you use is, if you line it up with the starters in National Pokedex order, it implies kind of that he's going to be using the starter that was left on the desk back at his lab at the beginning of the game. This is all speculation, just take that as you will. Now, even though Professor Oak's team is between level 66 and 70, which actually places him as the highest leveled NPC trainer in the entire game, because we had to use a Pokemon with a special stat of 226 with Ditto, it's probably going to be a pretty easy battle. Still, it's very satisfying to be able to access this secret boss trainer that's still in the game code. So that's it! Those are three of, in my opinion, the coolest uses of the Trainer Fly glitch. You might have noticed that you can actually do a lot with this glitch, more than just what was in this video. You can battle different Pokemon, battle different trainers. In the description of this video, I'm going to leave links to all of the relevant information you need. 
including the game FAQs page from Zero Kid. I'm going to leave a link to the Bulbapedia article on this glitch. This glitch is mostly called the Mew glitch because that is the most popular application for it, but it is technically Trainer Fly that encompasses all of the different things you can do with this glitch. I hope that you give it a try yourself. Again, if you've never really tried it before, I would try to avoid using the Professor Oak exploit. It's a little overly complicated. But it is very exciting to be able to just break this game down and just kind of make the game give you the things that you want without really needing any external devices. You don't necessarily need a lot of like game code development knowledge, although it does tie in. It's not really something that's fully required to understand. So it's it's just a lot of fun to exploit this glitch. I think that in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, there are dated games, but because of how breakable they are with glitches like these, it's really fun to go back to them and just kind of, you know, see what you can do with the game to make it your experience. And I think that's, that's something that's, you know, just really cool. Thanks all for watching. It means a lot that you guys came through to check out this video. It took a lot of work, a lot of time to put this all together, so I appreciate if you've made it this far. I do plan on doing other videos like it in the future, so if you like the video, give it a like, leave a comment. Comment as well if there's any ideas for videos you'd like to see like this one in the future. But until next time, thank you again, and see you then.